Canada's fall economic statement for 2023 came out in recent weeks and most notably chapter one is an entire chapter on housing. There are four key parts to Canada's housing action plan and we're not going to be able to get through all four today in one video. So stay tuned for future videos which will cover each piece and those four pieces are building more homes faster, more construction workers to build more homes, supporting renters, buyers and homeowners and finally the new Canadian mortgage charter. In today's video, we're going to discuss building more homes faster and whether or not that's even going to be possible as immigration continues to ramp up here in Canada. And then we're also going to touch on the construction worker aspect of it as well. I'm Michael Luzes. I'm a realtor in the greater Toronto area. I'd love to hear your thoughts on if building more homes faster will be a solution to Canada's housing shortage. And if you ever want to book in a call with me, click on that first link in the description down below. Let's hop over to Korea's website. That's the Canadian Real Estate Association's website, which breaks down the housing measures that were announced in the 2023 fall economic statement and it includes the first ever housing related chapter titled Canada's Housing Action Plan which focuses on mitigating the housing crisis and restoring housing affordability for Canadians. You can head over to budget.canada.ca for the full housing action plan. We're going to go through 1.1 building more homes faster. As for 1.2 which is more more construction workers to build more homes. The biggest piece for 1.2 is that they would like to add more skilled tradespeople and workers who can build the homes required to meet the ambitious housing targets. And also another big piece of that is interprovincial labor mobility. So here's a quick breakdown of building more homes faster, tie infrastructure funding to actions, to increase housing supply where it makes sense to do so. They want to remove Move the goods and services tax GST from new purpose-built rental housing projects which also includes co-ops. I do think that removing the GST when it comes to building rental supply especially in major cities for example like Toronto is a great start when it comes to building more rental properties. One thing to note when it comes to rental properties here in Toronto is that they are typically at the market rent or even higher and one thing that I've been seeing come up recently is that some of these buildings that are a year old have been sending rent rental increases to bring the rent up to market value. Anything built newer than November 15, 2018 has no rent control. It can be raised at any amount every single year. And what I've typically seen here when it comes to those purpose-built rentals is that the increases can be pretty substantial a month of an increase year over year which won't exactly help when it comes to affordable rentals. I'm curious to see how that's gonna play out here, even though the government is adding a GST rebate. Additional 15 billion new funding starting in 2025, 2026 for the apartment construction loan program, an additional 1 billion over three years, again, starting in 2025, 2026 for the affordable housing fund. If these rules don't come in until 2025, 2026, is that gonna mean that's when construction can start and we're giving a one or two year time for planning and development and approvals when it comes to permits? Or does that mean that the planning and approvals and permits won't start until 2025, 2026, which is an extra one to two year delay from where we are today? Increasing the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, which is CMHC, annual limit of support for low cost financing by 20 billion per year and designated the increased amount for funding mortgages on multi rental projects insured by CMHC, repurposing the surplus of federal properties to be developed into new homes, 300 million in new funding for the co-op housing development program, introducing legislation to establish Department of Housing, Infrastructure and Communities, which is currently Infrastructure Canada, in recognition of the link between housing and infrastructure. Let's talk about a few of those key points. And what really stands out to me is that none of these are coming into effect, at least from what I'm reading here until 2025, 2026. I'm not exactly sure why they wouldn't just get started in 2024 because that's an extra year of delay when it comes to constructing housing. And I also don't know if any of these incentives will encourage builders to start building faster. So let's jump back to the budget website. And here's something that's super important is that the CMHC Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation estimates Canada needs to build 3.5 million more homes by 20. 
2030. Let's look at what these numbers actually mean in terms of net new homes. The $4 billion housing accelerator fund is looking to create 100,000 net new homes. The $25 billion for low cost financing is for 71,000 new rental homes. $13 billion through the National Housing Co-op Investment Fund is looking to build 60,000 new affordable homes and repair 240,000 homes. $4 billion through the Rapid Housing Initiative is looking to build 12,000 affordable homes. And the $200 million through the Federal Lands Initiative is looking to build 4,500 new homes. On quick math, that looks like about 200,000 properties that will be built through this initiative and a repair of 240,000 existing homes. So that's the building more homes faster element of the Canadian economic statement. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on if it's basically in line with what you thought and whether or not starting in the next couple of years is a good idea versus just getting things started right now. I'm Mike Luzes. Thanks for watching.